you serve a mighty God. I can't hear you. Do you know you serve a mighty God? Do you know you serve an awesome God? When we look around and we see all that's going on, it doesn't make him less awesome. It makes him more awesome because you are here today and you can stand here and you're not as affected as other people. So we want you to lift your hands where you are and we want you to worship for those people who are having a harder time than you. We want you to lift your hands. We want you to cry out to God and sing this song with us. Do I have anybody who wants to sing with us today? Here we go. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. Strength when I am weak and forever he will reign. My God is awesome. 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 My God is awesome. 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 My God. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from, Hide me from the rain. Say, my God. My God is awesome. Heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weakened. Forever he Now lift your voice and say, my God. My Say awesome. awesome, my God is awesome. Hey, awesome. Sing, my God, my God is awesome. He's an awesome God. Awesome. He's an awesome God. Awesome. Hey, awesome. Say, my God, my God is awesome. Savior of the whole world. Today I am forgiven. His grace. Praise His holy name. Say, my God. My God is awesome. He's an awesome God. Awesome. He's an awesome God. Awesome. Hey. Awesome. Say, my God. My God is awesome. Say, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. 
mighty. He's mighty. He's mighty. He's mighty. Awesome. Awesome. See, awesome. Awesome. Say, he's great. 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 Awesome. Your voice. Say, my God, my God is awesome. He can move mountains, keep me in, and then he'll hide me. Say, my God, my God is awesome. Broken, strength where I've been weak, and forever he will reign. Say, he's mighty. He's mighty, he's mighty, he's mighty, he's mighty, he's mighty, he's mighty. awesome. awesome. Back in the house of the Lord. Come on, lift your voice. Awesome. Hallelujah. Awesome. Come on, come on, come on. know God is awesome. Regardless of what's going on, God is awesome. Come on, we are back again in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands today. Father, we love you today, and we honor you, Father. We miss 
your community presence, God. We miss worshiping together in the house of the Lord. But you are a restorer, and we are here today. Oh, Father, we love you, and we honor you today. Receive our worship today, God. Oh, God, come on, just worship him. Lift your hands. Tell him thank you. Come on, if you miss the presence with your brothers and sisters, tell him thank you. We thank God for being online, but there's nothing like being together in the house of the Lord. Father, we love you, and we honor you today. Father, we pray for our community. We pray for our state. We pray for our country, God, that is divided right now. But we thank you for a spirit of unity in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord God. We plead the blood over every city. We plead the blood over every neighborhood. We plead the blood over every family that has lost someone, God, during this pandemic, Lord God. We pray right now for healing and restoration, God. We know that you are the God of peace and that your peace will surpass all understanding, God. So, Father, even though we might have our head down, we will lift up our head and look toward the hills because that is where our help comes from. And our help comes from you. So we honor you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God a shout. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Lift your voice today. Amen. Amen. So normally I would tell you to hug your neighbor. So go like this in the air. Come on, give them like those rich people uh, uh, air kisses. Mm -hmm. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, give God a shout. It's so good to see you. Oh, it's so good to Come on, you can make more noise than that. Come on, come on, come on. It's good to see you today. So good to see you today. Do you know how hard it is preaching just to my mama? Huh? She's going to clap anyways. Nine weeks, I'm just looking at my mama. Now, no offense, mama. But I'm glad everybody else is here today, too. Come on, give Jesus a shout. I'm so happy to see you. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Well, did you miss us? Oh, uh, we miss you, amen. And I know watching online is one thing, but being together is another. Uh, Mama Shirley, Mr. Frank, stand up. I want to honor them. They, Mr. Frank and Miss Shirley, come on, give them a shout. Come on, turn around so they can see you. So they're two of our seniors, and they could be all nervous about coming to church and everything else, and they were here early this morning. And Mr. Frank and Ms. Shirley are our oldest members. And I don't mean old in age. They came to our first informational meeting in 2009, and they have never missed since. They've been here 11 years. And I love you with all of my heart. All of my heart. All of my heart. And so we're going to make a couple other announcements at the end. I want to honor Miss Rosemary, but I'm going to do that uh, toward the end, okay? I love you so much. I love you and your family. All right, are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? How many of y'all know it's kind of crazy out there? Huh? But today, and you might, you might be like, why did I come today? But you might as well get used to it. Come on, you know how I am, right? So we have a responsibility as believers and as the church beyond our skin color to be biblical and it's not going to be popular we're probably going to get a lot of nasty comments but I'm going to answer what's happening and I'm going to answer it biblically I'm not going to answer it culturally I'm not going to answer it through my color I'm not going to answer it through my experience I am going to answer it biblically because I am a pastor not a politician I am a pastor, and it is my job to be an ambassador of Jesus Christ no matter the pain. It is my job to preach the gospel no matter the pain. It is my job to lift up the name of Jesus Christ no matter the pain. And that is going to bring healing. Everything else going on is temporary, but the word of God is eternal. So repeat after me, don't worry, the kingdom is coming. Come on, lift your voice today. Lift your voice today. Don't worry. The kingdom is 
coming. And so today's message, part one, what's going on? Mother, mother. All oh, snaps. There's too many of you crying. Brother, 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 there's far too many of you dying. You know we've got to find a way to bring some love in here today. So, Father, Father, we don't need to escalate. You see, war is not the answer, for only love can conquer hate. Say, you know we've got to find a way to bring some love in here today. Oh, so picket lines and picket signs don't punish me with brutality but come on talk to me so you can see oh what's going on what's going on tell me what's going on i need to know what's going on yeah Are y'all ready? No, you ain't. You know, that song was written in 1971. It was written 49 years ago for the exact same reason we're dealing with things today. Now, I didn't have him singing for the reason some of y'all are thinking. I was four years old when that song was written by Marvin Gaye. And it was a musical response to a very real issue. Now, here's where you start to get upset, so just kind of fan yourself. The song was written 49 years ago, and a lot hasn't changed. 49 years. And see how that moved you? See how it moved you in your spirit? Now, here's where we start to collide today. The reason you can write a good song like that and move people like that, and after 49 years, things are still like that, is because believers have stopped being ambassadors. Well, wait a minute. No, 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 no. It's because of this. And no, no, no. It's because of that. No, 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 no. It's because believers have stopped being ambassadors. Black ones, white ones, Hispanic ones, yellow ones, and I'm going to add a color in there, purple ones, have stopped being ambassadors. And see, what I'm going to do and what I will never do is let you and your emotions and your pain, which are real, bring the message of Jesus down but my job is to lift you up and bring you to an aerial perspective, not one that's down from the street. Is what's happening real? 100% absolutely. But you can't deny the facts. And we are going to preach biblical facts, not emotions from people. It has been 49 years and nothing has transformed. And the reason it hasn't transformed is not for all the reasons you're watching on TV. It's not because of racism. It's not because of white people. It's not because of black people. It's not because of Hispanic people. It's not because of some systematic this or that. It's because we have stopped preaching the gospel to people who need it. You are not going to do a program and change somebody's heart. You are not. 
You are not going to say something to somebody and change somebody's heart. The heart needs to be transformed because the Bible said it is wicked who can know it and the only one that can transform a heart so it don't steal, so it don't kill, so it don't destroy is the Lord Jesus Christ and the people with the answer, the people with the message, black, white, Hispanic, have stopped preaching the message to people who need it. So you can't complain about what people do when you were standing next to them in line at the bank, at the grocery store, at church, in the gym, and you did not tell them about the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, which would have transformed their heart in the first place. What is going on 49 years later? Here it is. The church is asleep. I am not called to be a politician. I am not called to be a social justice warrior. I am called to be conformed to the image of the Son, and I'm called to walk like Jesus, talk like Jesus, move like Jesus, preach like Jesus, pray like Jesus, and I'm called to stand, and I'm called not to worry because the kingdom is coming. I am not here permanently. I am here temporarily. So I really don't care what's going on in the earth when I'm leaving. What do you mean you don't care? I mean, it's not my focus. I am concerned. I am concerned. But it is not my focus. Can I just... Well, Pastor Mark is whitewashed. Call it what you want. I'm a preacher, and I will, I will not move. And more so, I stand in the office of a prophet in times like this. And so I'm not talking to be popular or get somebody's votes or get somebody's approvals or get a million likes on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter. I don't even have an account for a reason. I'm going to preach this gospel, Johnny. The church is silent. The church has hid their light under a bushel. There were just as many problems when Jesus was on the earth. And he did not respond like we are responding. So let me say it like this. Because I got a lot of comments from a lot of people. So I called three days of prayer and seven people came. I called three days of prayer and seven people came. And that's because the church is cultural, not biblical anymore. So if we respond down here, how can we expect changes up here? The earth is in trouble, and today I'm going to walk through the scriptures. So you can be mad and angry and say I'm not addressing it. I'm going to address it through this Bible. Let's go. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's good to be back, and it's good to see you. But I'm a prophetic preacher, so I, I can't preach soft, Mom. You and I are called to be ambassadors of Christ. And the only thing going to transform our society, Minister Mike, the only thing going to transform the human heart is the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know there are some problems you can't take your car to a regular mechanic to? You have to take your car, Mike, back to the manufacturer because the manufacturer is the one who made the car and there are certain things other mechanics can't fix. If you want to fix, Rena, if you want to transform the human heart, you have to take it back to the manufacturer and the heart has to open up and the Lord Jesus Christ has to be invited in. And when he is invited in, he begins to Psalms 51.10, creating us a clean heart and renewing us a right spirit. Because nobody in here has a clean heart and nobody in here has a right spirit. Nobody protesting has a clean heart. Nobody protesting has a right spirit. And nobody in church has a clean heart. And nobody in church has a right spirit unless they have invited the creator of that heart on the inside and allow him to do a work so it can be seen on the outside. The only answer to all the chaos, everything you're reading in the newspaper is already in your Bible. So if you want to know what the newspaper is going to write on Friday, read your word today on Sunday. 
We are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. We carry a message of love and forgiveness, and only love and forgiveness together will transform our culture, will transform our society enough for Jesus to come back and rescue those that are obedient. But this thing is going down in flames. Look at your neighbor and say, I wish it wasn't like this. But our world is the Titanic. <laughs> but look at your neighbor again and tell him, hey, you ain't got to sink with the ship. I'm going to show you the word today. Let's go. Principle, now, are you all right? Or you wish you were still at home watching Facebook on, with your PJs? You all right? Come on, if you come to Abundant Living, you're tough. If you come to Abundant Living, you can take it. If you come to Abundant Living, you can be offended. Come on, somebody, because the Word of God and the gospel offends, but after the offense is transformation. Principle number one, revelation comes from God. Revelation, Summer, comes from God. And it tells a very different story than information. We are watching a battle, George, of information from all these jokers versus revelation from the one who knows. The believer cannot get caught up in information so much that they forget their purpose, which is an ambassador of Christ, Jason, and they forget who is the real enemy. Somebody better talk to me because here's, here's what I know. I have not heard from NBC, CNN, NPR, CBS, or Fox. I have not heard from any of these information groups who is really behind what's happening. I have not heard them named. I have not heard them identified. I have not heard them labeled. And I am ashamed before God on this Sunday morning for pastors getting all their information from the left side and not from the right side. We have an opportunity to spread the revelation knowledge of God so the human heart can have Jesus Christ in it, so it can transform, so it can be an ambassador. I will not preach from the left side. I will always preach from the right side because the right side is where the answer is. Why on earth would I invite you here on Sunday to tell you what they've been talking about? So who's the real enemy? Ephesians 6, 12. Mm. For we are not fighting. Say not fighting. We are not fighting. Say not fighting. I know this is going to be hard. It's going to be hard, but listen to me, especially from where your, where your melanin comes from, how much melanin you have. I know it's going to be a little tough, but you got to come out of this skin and get into your spirit. you got to come out of this skin and get into your spirit. you got to come out of this skin, whether you white, whether you black, whether you are Hispanic, you got to come out of this skin and you have to get into your spirit because that's where Jesus lived. He don't live in your melanin. He don't live... He don't live in your skin. Matter of fact, the scripture tells me that God don't look on the outside. God looks at the inside. And if God is looking at the inside, your first responsibility is to look on the inside. It doesn't mean you don't do something on the outside, but what you do on the outside better be righteous. And pain is not an excuse to not be who you were created to be. We are not fighting against flesh and blood. Somebody tell me what that is. What does that mean? Leo, we are not fighting against humans. We are not wrestling against humans. We are wrestling against, Johnny, layers of spiritual demonic forces and until CNN and Fox start talking about the spiritual realm, start talking about the second heaven, because you know there's three, right? The first heaven is the sky that you see. The second heaven, Crystal, is where demonic principalities and angels are from God. The third heaven is where God lives. And it's the second heaven causing problems in the first one. 
It's the second heaven causing problems in the first one. So if you want to fight a human, you are not doing anything in the second heaven. You are not doing damage in the second heaven. When we come for three days of prayer and seven people show up, how can the answer ever get done? Now, some of you are sitting here convicted right now, and I'm glad. Because until we are called, and you're going to see it in the scripture, until we learn to come and pray first and protest second, ain't nothing going to change. You don't got to like it, and you don't got to clap. I don't care. Prayer, I am not against protest. Please listen to me. Nothing has changed without protest. But it better be righteous. It better be legal. It better not hurt someone else. You are hypocritical if you are protesting murder, but then you go out and murder. You are hypocritical if you are protesting destruction, and then you go out and destroy. It is hypocritical. It is unrighteous. It is not the righteousness of God, and you are not an ambassador when you do that and I'm going to look at you while you're looking at me Martin Luther King figured it out and gave his life most young people can't understand that because they can't give up their phone he said I will be peaceful even if evil people are attacking me because it makes them look bad. But when people are unrighteous, responding to unrighteousness the same, God judges them both. And my Bible tells me, take the beam out of your own eye before you judge someone else because the judgment you call on the person that did it will also come on you if you did it. See, here we go. Okay, I wasn't going to do it, but now I'm, I'm in trouble right now. Here, here, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, murder is absolutely 100% unacceptable, and it is terrible. But Jesus came and says, hey, here, watch this. I have a higher standard, and I, I cannot stand murder because murder is taking somebody's life, Pastor Dor, who's in the image of Christ. But I also can't stand hate because some of you haven't figured out that murder starts with hate. So if I see hate in your heart, you are a murderer. So it's hypocritical to go after a person who murdered and then start hating while while you protest because they the same sin I'm called to love in the hardest darkest place I'm called to love with the worst people because I was the worst people and he loved me. I was the worst people. He loved me, Nate. How can I judge someone else who did something completely evil when I was completely evil? And instead of God coming after and killing me, God came to me with love, with open arms, and told me he would forgive me, Mom, if I came to him. So my job is to spread forgiveness even to the worst of the worst because I used to be the worst of the worst. But how can the church respond when pastors are stupid? You can call me stupid. I don't care. You ugly. No, I'm playing. That was nice. That was nice. I thought you said don't hate, Mark. We have enemies that are evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. Ginger, they are, they are mighty powers in the dark world. And we are wrestling against evil spirits in heavenly places. Listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. First heaven, blue sky. Second heaven, crystal, outer space. That's where the, the demonic spirit of death is. That's where lying is. You can read your Bible and see where all of these demons are. And until somebody gets on TV and starts talking about the source of the puppeteer, I don't care about the puppets. I care about the puppeteer. Oh, you don't want to talk to me. I care about the puppeteer. I care about the demonic realm that is controlling people and using pain, legitimate pain, using legitimate suffering to make people do what they deeply in their heart Priscilla want to do. 
It is a spiritual battle, and it can only be handled in prayer. It is a spiritual battle, and it can only be handled in prayer. Pastor Mark, are you telling us we don't need to do anything? I'm telling you that you need to pray first and get your instructions so you know what to do. Oh, you don't hear me talking to you. A group ain't telling you what to do. A group of people ain't telling you what to do. You and I need to go in the prayer closet and find out what Jesus wants to do because sometimes he tells you to be still so you can know that he is God. Psalms 46.10. Sometimes he tells you to move. Sometimes he tells you to protest. But he will never tell you to protest and destroy things. He will never tell you to protest and break the law. And some of you can't protest because you can't do it without hate and destruction. I'm not wrestling against flesh and blood. My problem is not a white person. My, my problem is not a black person. My problem is not a Hispanic person. My problem is all these demonic spirits going unchallenged with prayer, going unchallenged with worship, going unchallenged with fasting. My problem is the people that actually have the power to do something are hiding their power under a bushel. My problem is the people that have the light are out in the darkness perpetrating darkness instead of bringing light to the darkness because when light comes, Tiffany, it expels darkness. The reason why the darkness is spreading, the reason why sin are on fire is because the church is hiding inside talking like the world. The church is worldly. The church is secular. The church is not ambassadors. The church is full of sin. The church needs to repent. The church is unrighteous. Pastors are unrighteous. Pastors have a secular message. Pastors don't have a biblical message. Pastors are not praying. Pastors are not fasting. Pastors are not carrying the message of the gospel of of Jesus Christ and it is that message that will transform I've got fire shut up in my bones ah. we got a job to do and it ain't against each other we have a job to do and it's to pray down these demons. It's to pray down these demons. It's to pray down these demons. It's to fast these demons out of our heart. It's to fast these demons out of our marriage. It's to fast these demons out of our children. It's to fast these demons out of our culture. What's going on? Mother, mother. Brother, brother, war is not the answer. 49 years of a sleep church. And from 1971 to 2020, no real transformation. Because we left the human heart alone and start speaking to people's heads. And their head going to follow their heart. So for 49 years, we didn't put Jesus in their heart. So their heart is the same. And a fancy song ain't going to do it. Principle number two. If you get something, shout for Jesus. I know it's tough. I know it's tough. Everybody can't come here. I wasn't going to say this. Alex, I don't know. They're probably going to take it down. I wasn't going to. I'm going to. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. You, you know how many letters I've got from pastor's mama? Of all black churches, all white churches, all Hispanic churches. You know how many letters I got from pastors? that have a church that don't look like Home Depot, they got a church that don't look like Stater Brothers, they got a church that don't look like the gym. Do you know how many letters I got from pastors, pastoring all black people, pastoring all white people, pastoring all Hispanic people, and they call themselves multi-ethnic if they got one black person in an all-white church, one white person in an all-black church, or one black person in an all-Hispanic church, and they all sent me letters about racism and they racist at 11 o'clock every Sunday. 
How are you going to send me a letter and tell me to join something when you can't on a weekly basis intermingle people? See, I don't, I don't get the luxury to talk to all black people during this time because it's a luxury because you can preach a black message and everybody black will shout. I love that our church look like heaven. I love that this church is black, white, Hispanic. So I don't get to preach a singular message. I got to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ because the last time I checked, Jesus came to die for all. He came for all. He came for all. He didn't die for just Jewish people. He died for Jewish people and Roman guards who put nails in his hands. He died for Roman guards who put nails in his hands, Frisha. He died for Roman guards. He didn't just die for Jewish people. So I don't get the luxury like most pastors. And they're going to call me. Call me. Call me. I don't get the luxury to talk to one color. And how can you talk about systematic racism when every Sunday at the time you have service is systematic racist? It's systematic. Am I lying, Shawana? Am, if I'm lying, I'll get off this, I'll get off this a stage. How can you send me a letter and you want to fight the police? You want to fight systematic racism and you racist every Sunday? I love this church. It make it be balanced. You come to this church, you go sit next to a white person if you're black. If you come to this church, you go sit next to a Hispanic person if you're white. If you, so if you got a problem, you better get over it. Because we worship Jesus together. I said I wasn't going to do this today. I was trying to be calm and just, yeah, I can. Pastor Kendra said, you ain't. She told me last night, you ain't. I said, yes, I am. Principle number two, let me hurry up. We're almost done. How do we really know who the enemy is? Listen. How do we really know who the enemy is when our emotions and our hearts are being pounded with pain? Do you know that pain distorts it, Miss Yolanda? Do you guys know pain will distort who the enemy is? Are you hearing me? Pain will distort what you see. Crystal, it will distort what you see. Pain and emotion and propaganda from them guys on the left, and all of them do it. Propaganda will distort what you see. So how do we know who the who the real enemy is, Mike? It's gotta go. It's gotta be the Bible because God is eternal, and He knew what was gonna happen in 1971, and He knew what was gonna happen in 2020. But God has been calling the church to preach His Son Jesus for thousands of years. We just don't want to obey because we want to be popular and cultural. We don't want to be biblical because being biblical causes persecution. Being biblical causes persecution. If you're a young person in here today, you are going to be persecuted for standing righteously. Righteously, Pastor Mark, what does that word mean? It literally means to stand in the right position in front of Jesus. So you and I are supposed to live like Jesus is standing in front of us. We're supposed to tweet like Jesus is standing in front of us. We're supposed to... Post on Instagram like Jesus is standing in front of us. We're supposed to talk like Jesus is standing in front of us. We're supposed to live like Jesus is standing in front of us. We're supposed to love like Jesus is standing in front of us. That is righteous behavior. But when you have a sign on the corner by Jess Ranch, F the police, you are not having a sign like Jesus is standing in front of you. So I'm not honking for you. I'm not going to honk for you. I drove past there. And I saw the F the police sign, and I just kept going forward. Well, Pastor Mark, it's because you're not black. Pastor Mark, it's because, why? Because I ain't going to vote for Joe Biden? What? Did that come out? I was thinking it, but did it, did it come out? What did I do? Did it come out? Because I wasn't going to say it. I'm not going to honk and support unrighteousness. Even if I support the cause. I'm a pastor. You are not going to see my car 
supporting F the police. And then when somebody break in your house, you want to call the police. I, I, don't, I don't understand it. You want to defund the police, but when something happens, you want to call the police. This guy wrote an article, big article, and wanted to defund the police. Then the rioters came over his fence, and then he called the police. Well, what if they would have been defunded before he called? Who was he going to call? Ghostbusters? Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters? Who, who are you going to call? You better stop acting crazy. Why do you want to defund the police because of one bad officer when well, you don't want to defund teachers from one bad teacher sleeping with a student? You don't want to defund churches when one pastor steals the money or sleeps with his secretary. You don't want to talk to me today. You don't want to get rid of all lawyers when one lawyer cheats somebody. You don't want to get rid of all politicians. Well, maybe so. When one politician does something, come on, somebody, why are we judging a whole group when one person is evil why are we judging a whole group when one person is evil you are at the lowest common denominator and you need to get right with Jesus you need to pray more listen more worship more and read more because you are falling for the okie doke revelation is outside of the emotional realm so Mike who is the real enemy John 10 10 tells me I don't have to watch Fox and I don't have to watch CNN who who is the real enemy? The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I, Jesus, have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. If I see stealing, if I see killing, if I see destruction, it is not a race of people. If I see stealing, if I see killing, if I see destruction, it is not an entire race of people. If I see stealing, if I see killing, if I see destruction, I am watching the work of the evil one whose name is the devil. Three claps because you don't like that. Three claps because you don't like that. I'm going after the puppeteer, not the puppets. Well, this has been going on since the 60s. Well, it's been going on longer than that. Because the devil been alive since before humans. And he's been stealing, and he's been killing, and he's been destroying since the garden. You think because you got Facebook and can post something, now all of a sudden you got the answer? He's been here since the beginning of time, Pastor Dora, stealing and killing and putting his knee on people's neck since before there were necks. You better start fighting who's in charge. You better start fighting who's in charge. And guess who's in charge of this world? The prince of this world. Because Adam gave this world up without a fight. But where is the life more abundantly? It's in the hands of the ambassadors who quit. Do you know if an ambassador is sent from a country, oh, Lord, help me. Are y'all all right? Because uh, we need one service because I can't do this again. <laughs> do you know if an ambassador is sent from a country, Mom, Rosemary, and they go to the other country, and sometimes they're there so long, they start acting like the country. Some of you young people, because they don't teach you government no more, you don't know what ambassadors are. And ambassadors carry the will of the home country, Leo, to another country, and then that country is supposed to adopt the will of the home country. Y'all don't want to talk to me today. The Bahamas didn't used to be free, Priscilla. They were under um, Britain. They were under there. And that's why if you look at the Bahamas and look at their court system, they all black people wearing white wigs because they used to wear white wigs in England. Somebody going to talk to me today. But now the Bahamas are free. But listen to me very carefully. <laughs> they would send ambassadors, and the ambassadors would go to the Caribbean islands, which is not European, and they would bring a system from the Europeans into the Caribbean islands for an exchange of resources. For an 
the king says, okay, we'll take this island and we'll give you resources, but you have to act like us, walk like us, talk like us, or you don't get no resources. But sometimes they would have to recall an ambassador because they would send the ambassador, Brooke, to the other culture, and then the ambassador would get caught up in the culture they were supposed to transform, and the culture start transforming the ambassador. Once the king found out that the ambassador was tripping, he would... He would recall the ambassador. I'm watching God recall a lot of Christians because they have stopped being ambassadors and they caught up in the culture they were supposed to transform. You don't have to clap. Whenever I see stealing, whenever I see killing, whenever I see destruction, it ain't white or black people. They're just the puppets. It is the devil. And if I don't get on my knees, I need to shut up. This is not righteousness. This is not Jesus. People worked hard to build some of this. And they all colors. And when you come and burn it down, you just as bad as knee on neck. <laughs> Number three, because I got to let you go before somebody shoots me. For the kingdom of God to come, the current kingdom has to be shaken. Please listen, I'm going to get into some end time prophecy over these next couple of weeks because you don't have to worry. Repeat after me because you forgot the title because everything I've been yelling, Rena. Watch, don't worry, say don't worry. don't worry. The kingdom is coming. You don't have to worry. So listen to me, listen to me, and you're going to have a fit right now. Listen to me, you don't have to fix our society because you can't. Your job is to snatch people out so when Jesus comes, they can escape the tribulation. Your job is to snatch people out so when the human history ends. Can I, ah, can, can I say this? When did you think human history was going to end? Tonight we're going to party like it's 1999. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, because when 2000 came, everybody thought the computers was going to crash, and everybody thought if the world was ending. And guess what? 2000 came, and people were still drunk. They was drunk at 1159. They was drunk at 1201. Because guess what? Nothing ended. But listen to me, Rosemary. Don't worry. The kingdom is coming. Don't worry. The founder is coming. Don't worry. Jesus is coming. Listen to me. Listen to me. Be at peace. Jesus is coming. Listen to me. Be at peace. Jesus is coming. Is it perfect? Heck no. But don't worry. Jesus is coming. So why don't you give people Jesus so that when he comes, they can leave? You're not, you're, you're not a citizen here. You are a temporary citizen here. Peter tells us, Frisha, you and I are temporarily here. So I can't be consumed by temporary issues. I need to be concerned. I need to be aware. I need to vote. Come on, somebody. I need to do all of those things. But I cannot be overly concerned because I'm leaving. Is some pastor going to tell the truth Sunday morning? I don't need to be overly concerned. I'm leaving. I'm packing. I'm packing. I'm packing. You ain't got to pack, mama. You leaving, huh? Right, right, right. I'm packing. No, listen to me. Because some of you have gotten so wound up. We see it on Facebook. And, and you forgot you're leaving. This kingdom has to be shaken. And I'm going to read the scripture. And right now, okay, listen, listen. Oh, God. Mike, if you are going to Alaska in the winter, two weeks before, don't you think you should start packing? Stand up. Come here. Now, Mike's different. We call Mike a Viking. But Mike can't go in no shorts. He would try, though. You would try. Look, look at those sexy legs. Look, 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 I know your wife's watching. Watch, watch, look, he can't go to a, come here, come on. 
oh my God, social distancing, let me back up six feet. Look. Okay, stop. Don't, I don't, don't give me the coronas. Stop. So, look, look at those knees. Can he go to Alaska? No, listen to me. Can he go to Alaska like that? Does that make sense in the winter? White people. No, I'm playing. Look, look, black people, like, forget that. I ain't going to Alaska anyway. No, I'm playing. So, look, look, he's got a pack. No, listen to me. He's got a pack. Should he be in fear because he's going to Alaska? Should he pack, Angie? That, okay, listen, he's going on a trip. Here, listen to me. Should he pack a different set of clothes to go to Alaska in the winter? Right. Now, watch, watch. If he knows he's going to Alaska, he should not worry while he's packing. The problem is the church has forgotten they're going to be raptured. The church has forgotten they're going to escape the tribulation. And the reason they're in trouble is because they don't want to pack. Listen to me. It's time to pack. It's time to get prepared. No, listen to me. The kingdom is coming. Jesus is coming, Dad. And the Bible describes what the weather is like while you pack. He's at home packing. And he looks out and sees it's hot where he's at. But that's not where he's going. He's going where it's cold. So there has to be something happening before he gets to his destination. That's what you're witnessing right now. You're witnessing the world being shaken. Thank you, Mike. Give him a hand clap. But don't worry. The kingdom is coming. Here's my last point. Luke chapter 21, it's in the book of Mark too. Luke chapter 21, verses 25 through 28, verses 30 and verse 36. Are y'all right today? Some of you just look like you're in shock. Hey, welcome back. <laughs> Listen to what it says. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. How many of y'all saw the eclipse a little while ago? How many of y'all felt the earthquake last Wednesday? The earth is literally shaken. And we've had more earthquakes, Jason, because Jesus said there will be earthquakes and wars, Randy, and rumors of wars. All these things must come before I come. While you pack, there's going to be problems. Look at your neighbor and say, while I pack, there's going to be problems. So don't worry. The kingdom's coming. Watch, Brooke, there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And what does it say? And on the what, Mike? Earth what? Peace. China, Iran, Russia, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Kazakhstan. Come on, somebody talk to me. Iraq, California, New York. Come on, somebody talk to me. Every nation right now is in distress because we're packing. And they're in distress with perplexity. Do you know what perplexity means, Dora, in the Greek? It means complicated and misunderstanding. So while we're packing, getting ready to be raptured by the founder, it's going to get complicated. Have you noticed, Pastor Kendra, Isaiah said, in the end times, right is going to be wrong, and wrong is going to be right. If you just watch TV, you can see that front, right in front of your face. Right is wrong, is wrong is right. I wasn't going to say this, but I'm going to say this too because now I'm already in it. How come I can burn a church but couldn't go to church? No. How come I can't go shop but I can loot it? How did protesting and rioting cure the deadly pandemic? Yeah. 
how come governors want to keep me in my house, but they can protest arm in arm? It's perplexing. Listen, I'm trying to show you what you are watching was already written down. This is perplexing. Danielle, this don't make sense. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Up is down, down is up. But Jesus told me, the sea and the waves are roaring. How many tsunamis has it been over the last 20 years? The tsunamis are an earthquake under the water. Men's hearts, look at this, men's hearts and women's hearts failing from fear and failing from the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, which are coming. Can I tell you something? And you're going to be depressed. This ain't what's happening. It's going to get worse, which is why you have to pack. It's going to get worse. You're bent out of shape. And something else is coming. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to get some emails about this too. This is probably my last sermon, Pastor Kendra. <laughs> I did a whole teaching, and I'm going to bring it back, Kenny. I mapped out the book of Revelations, and I mapped it out with facts and scripture. And I'm going to say something, and you just need to breathe because it's going to be hard for you. But I'm going to pull it back out, and I'm going to preach it, Mom. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach it. The book of Revelations is not coming. The book, of, the book of Revelations is not coming. The book of Revelations is now. The book of Revelations is now. That's why you miss the locusts and the murder hornets. You miss the virus and the murder hornets. Chernobyl? What's a Chernobyl? Chernobyl, the nuclear meltdown, is seal number three. You can look at the numbers and match the third of the sea died around it. You can... I'm going to stop. We're in the book of Revelations. Listen to me. It is not coming. So you need to pack. Look at your neighbor and say, please pack. Say, please pack. So say it like this. Say, pray and pack. Pray and pack. Men's hearts filling in for the expectations to come, for the powers of the heavens will be what? Shake it. Then they will see. Then, watch. Listen, all this, all this, Reggie, all this, then they will see what? The rapture. The rapture. Then they will see Jesus, Priscilla. Watch this. Then they will see, so it jumps ahead. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, watch this. Now, it goes back. You have to watch it. It jumps back. Then they will see, after we packed and after the earth is shaken, after we're perplexed, after right is wrong and wrong is right, Sheila, after all of that, then they will see the Son of Man coming. Then verse 28 goes back to the packing. Now, when these things begin to happen, say begin to happen. Well, am I preaching the scripture or giving you my opinion? Now, when these things begin to happen, look up. Look up. Look up. Where are you looking at people's skin? Where are you looking at the police? Where are you looking at the protesters? Where are you looking at the looters? Where are you looking? Where are you looking? Where is the church looking? This is why the church can't guide nobody because the church don't have an aerial view. They have a street one. What does the Bible say? Look where? Look at people. Look at white people. Look at black people. Look at Hispanic people. Look, 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 look. Systematic, systematic. This, this. Look, look, look. What does the Bible say? Look up. Look up. And unless somebody's 50 feet tall. <laughs> Jesus told me, Mark, when these things happen and you're confused, please look up. Look up at me. Look up at me. Look at me. I used to take my kids to go get a shot, and they'd be scared to get a shot. And I would say, look at me. Look at me. L look at me. 
I would say, look at me, Miss Rosemary. And I didn't want them, they, when they looked at the needle, they panicked. When they looked at the needle, they screamed. Krista, I'd say, look at me, look at Daddy, look at Daddy. And I would hold them. And then when I took their eyes off of the shot and they put their eyes on me, Dora, they found out they had already got pricked, Pris Priscilla, and it was gone. I said, look at me. Jesus said, I know things are going on. I know there's violence. I know there's brutality. I know there's this. I know there's that. Look at me. Look at me. Come on, what's the Bible say? Look at me, Joanne. Look at me. Look at me. What's the scripture say? Watch, watch. What does it say? Look up and lift up your heads because your redemption, I paid in full what you owe me and it's drawing near. So verse 36, watch therefore and, watch therefore and, there were seven people here. I didn't know you were doing it. You're lying because there were 600 people watching on Facebook. You lie. You're lazy. I'm preaching hard today, Vaughn. I'm sweating like somebody else. I ain't going to say it. Watch, therefore, and what did the Bible tell me to do when this stuff happens? What did it tell me to do? What did it tell me to do? Where did it tell me to look? Where did it tell me to look? Where did it tell me to look? What did it tell me to do? Pray always. There are not certain social issues that I should stop praying and be angry about. I should pray through every social issue no matter how bad it is. Well, I've been praying. Ain't nothing changed. I've been praying since 1971. You liar. <laughs> Anybody that tells me prayer don't work don't got a prayer life. <laughs> prayer, do you know what prayer is about, mama? You a prayer. You know what praying is about? Praying is about not getting answers. Prayer is about sensing God's movement. And sometimes he moves Rena the way we don't want him to move. And prayer is about accepting the movement of God, not getting an answer from God, because most of the time, God is the answer. Did God come and rescue Jesus when he prayed? No. He, he, Jesus sensed God's movement. Y'all don't want that. Watch therefore and pray, I'm done, always that you may be counted worthy to escape what Nate? All these things. Pray so that you can be worthy to what? I'm not staying. Please pack. Come on, give Jesus a shout. Come on, lift your voice today. I know it's hard. Come on, stand to your feet. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. But this Bible got the answer. I know it's hard. Come on, lift your hands. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you, God, to anoint your word, God. I ask you, God, it ain't easy to hear, but we ain't weak. We ain't weak. Whether we're white, black, or Hispanic, or Asian, we have to open up our Bible and close our heart to hate. We have to look up and pray. There's no other answer. The Bible told us what to do. When we're perplexed, look up. When the kingdom's being shaken, look up. Now, I want you right now in this church and watching online. You probably clicked off, but if you're watching, I, I want you to it, take the next minute, and I want you to repent. That means say you're sorry to God and turn from whatever behavior you have allowed yourself to fall into over the last couple of weeks. Because I don't know what you did. I, I had to repent about some things. So I want you to take this moment. Turn it up for me, Brooklyn. I want you to take this moment and be honest. Be honest and repent for whatever behavior you got into or thoughts that were unrighteous. Because don't tell me you've been perfect through all of this. And then we're going to get back together. Come on, tell God. Tell God right now. Say, I'm sorry for telling. Telling. I'm sorry for not looking up if you don't have nothing to say. I'm sorry for not praying. I'm sorry my church had three days of prayer and seven people came. God didn't call you to watch us on Facebook and pray. He said, assemble yourselves together. What were you doing? You couldn't pray for a half hour. 
but you, but you comment for an hour on Facebook. Won't come physically and lift you. Come on, don't look at me like that. You knew we were praying. What were you doing that you couldn't pray for 30 minutes but can post for two hours? Tell God you're sorry. Because if we don't pray, nothing changes. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that we're packing. I thank you that we're not going to stay here. I thank you, Father, we are temporary citizens, and we are concerned about things that are unrighteous. But we will not answer, come on up, babe, with unrighteousness. We will be righteous. We will be righteous in our response. Father, there is the crime, and then there is the response. The crime is always going to be evil. The response must be Christian, must be love must be forgiveness for believers. If I'm not a believer, I don't have to respond that way. But if I am called by your name, I have to humble myself, I have to pray, I have to seek your face so you can hear from heaven, forgive my sins, so you can heal the land. Please listen to me. Jesus is the one who will heal the land. You will not. You cannot. You will not. You cannot. Well, then what am I supposed to do, Pastor Mark? Look up and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we look up, all of us. And I thank you for this multicultural church. We will look up and we will pray always. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Come on, come on. Now listen to me. If you're here today, we've got 10 more minutes. If you're here today and you do not know who Jesus is, you are going to be hurled into eternity, whether it's somebody with their knee on your neck or a car accident, or going into the hospital and not expecting to pass away. You must be born again. You must make your reservation before you pack. You don't pack before you make your reservation. Your reservation is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ wants to forgive you, wants to live inside of your heart and create in you a clean heart and renew in you a right spirit. But you must be born again. The Bible says all people are born sinners. That means separated from God. And if you don't believe you're a sinner, ask your mama what you were like between the ages of two and three. Ask her how many times you bit your sister, how many times you pinched their hair, how many times, and we got enough sin on you from the ages of two to three to last your whole life. Come on. So the question is not whether you are a sinner. The question is not whether you have broke God's law. The question is will you be pardoned before you have to leave? Jesus Christ is the ultimate pardon. Jesus will pardon you right now in Jesus' name. So whether you're watching me on this camera or whether you are in this church, you must be born again and you know you need to be forgiven if you have a life of sin, a life that is evil, a life that is unrighteous. What is unrighteous? You can't live the life you're living if Jesus was standing in front of you. If you can't do what you do every day without, like you were standing in front of Jesus, you are not born again. And you don't want me to say it to you like that, but it's true. I, Jesus could follow me around all the time. Why? Because I am not in no active lifestyle sin. Do I sin? Absolutely. But I'm convicted immediately because Jesus is not on the outside knocking. He's on the inside cleaning me up. I feel it on the inside. If you can do wrong and do evil and fornicate and commit adultery and click on porn and lie and dishonor your mother and dishonor your father, if you can steal, if you can destroy, if you can do all those things and you don't feel bad, Jesus is still knocking on the outside. But if you do any of those things and you feel convicted immediately, you are already born again. But if you can do your lifestyle, you can still live together and not be married and smash like you married, the scripture is clear. You must be born again and fornicators, adulterers, liars, and thieves will find their part in the pit. Where is the pit? In the lake of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Revelation 20 verse 10 and the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and there they are tormented day and night sex outside of marriage lying, cheating, dishonoring your mother and father all ten commandments all ten canons pointed at you if you do that as a lifestyle you are not a Christian you are not born again and you will die and go to hell 
Preachers better start telling the truth and stop patting people up. You don't know when you're going to go. You must be born again. If you're here today and any of that hits you, you're involved in any of that behavior, and you know you've got to invite Jesus in. Don't try to change your behavior. Don't say, okay, I'll go home and stop smashing. You need the Lord Jesus Christ because you might stop smashing, but you're still lying. You must be born again, this time in God's family. If that's you, stand up all over the building and don't be worried. This is your first time back. You might as well get slapped around a little bit before eternity. Stand to your feet. If Come on, don't worry about what people think. Stand to your feet today if you know you need to make some changes. Stand to your feet today. If you are watching on Facebook, you can tell them, make it. God bless you. Because some of y'all are just not honest. You was lying on the way here. You lie on the phone. You lie to your friends. Liars don't have the truth in them, and the truth is the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are a liar, you don't have Jesus in you. Some of you have been so full of hate the last week or two, you need to stand up with both hands up. You must be born again, and we must forgive. We must forgive so you can be forgiven. Lift your hands if you're standing. I got some honest people. I got some liars sitting. Now, I'm going to give you another chance. Say, Pastor Mark, you just too much today. Welcome back. I've been wound up for nine weeks. If you're watching on Facebook, you must be born again. So repeat after me. Dear Jesus, come into my heart. My heart is evil. My heart needs to be cleansed. Come into my heart and create in me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit. Lord Jesus, I just do what I want to do. From now on, I will do what I was created to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, the Lord. The Lord just dropped this in my spirit. He said, a lot of you are like Lot's wife. We have been so conformed to this world and so used to this world and we become like the world. We don't want to give up the world. Yet we say Ooh. we're Christians, Ooh. you know, but we're not living that Christian life now. When, when God asks us to give up something or not to do something or to, to live a certain way or speak the truth to someone that you know needs to hear that truth, we won't do it because we're lovers of the world. And what happened to Lot's wife? turned to stone, got stuck where she wanted to be. So I just want to just to admonish you to don't be lovers of this world. Don't be Lot's wife. She couldn't give it up. God gave her a warning. So he was rescuing her. Gave her a way out with Ooh, her husband. Good. And she still turned around and looked back. That's so Because good. she longed for that life. And many of us as Christians have been longing for that old life. But God called us out of that life. Amen. Can so I, I add just, something? Yes. She looked back, got stuck, left her daughters looking at her, look at unrighteousness, and they slept with their daddy. Thank you. What you do as a parent yes. determines what your kid's going to do. Yes. So I just wanted to share that with you. If, if you're, you're in that, that uh, valley or that one foot on this side of the fence and the other foot on the other side of the fence, I want you to really go home and check your heart and really have a real conversation with God. And say, you know what, take this love of the world out. out of my heart. Because that's the biggest problem I sense that Christians are experiencing today. Because we become like, it's hard to discern who's a Christian and who's not. We're not ambassadors. Our mouth you. says one thing, our actions says something else. And it's time for our actions to line up with our words. Amen? Amen. Come on, give God a shout. I know this was tough. I know this was tough. But somebody's got to start speaking prophetically into what's happening so Jesus can come. Come on, give Jesus a shout. It's time to give. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It's so good you're going to be able to give and sow in person. We have our ushers come on out. If, if you're here today, if you already have your giving set up or reoccurring, that is great. You guys have done a tremendous job while we were shut down for the nine weeks. We're not going to pass the bucket. The ushers are going to come down, and you'll just be able to put it in. That way we stay clean and stay sanitized, whatever all them words are. But you are pouring into the kingdom of God.
God. Some of you don't know, during this whole pandemic, we did not stop picking up people from jail. We did not stop serving people. We did not stop reaching people. We kept going and we kept going. They deemed us essential workers. Imagine that, the church, essential workers. Because guess what? Just because there's a virus don't mean people don't need help in the middle of the night. And you have continued to fund that. You brought so much food last week. Pastor John has 62 beds, two women's houses, five men's houses, and he stood there and cried and had a hard time receiving all the food because we're going to do that once a month. Why? Because we are together and people need Jesus and people need help. And what you're giving right now, whether it's online, on Facebook, there's four different ways you can give, or whether you're giving in person, you are allowing Abundant Living to get the gospel out to people who need to pack. It's time. So I'm not saying we don't do things. I'm just saying do it and pack and pray. So we appreciate your giving. I appreciate your faithfulness. Usher, you can go ahead and receive the offering. I appreciate your faithfulness. During those nine weeks we were at home, we didn't miss a beat. And give yourself a hand clap. I love you. I love you. And I'm so thankful for you. You couldn't come and you were still faithful because ministry was still needed. Okay, and where's, where's my women at? Where's the phenomenal women the at? Phenomenal women. The phenomenal women. Oh, you can do better than that. Y'all ain't got lazy. Let's do it one more time. Where are you at? <laughs> um, as you heard, there's two women's houses in, that we were helping. It's seven houses total. Two of them are women. What I want you to do next Sunday, God's Phenomenal Women, I want you to bring some feminine hygiene project, products or some shower gels, stuff like that, so we can donate to those women houses. So if you can, bring at least one item for, we have a lot of women here, so we should be able to support them for some months, okay? So please bring those items, and we'll have a thing out in the foyer for us to be able to distribute to those women's houses. Amen? They pick, they pick women up off the street. We just helped a woman eight months pregnant with a one-year-old. She was at Winkle, and she didn't have no place to live. We had her in housing that night. Can you imagine being eight months pregnant, huh, and a baby and, and sleeping outside? We respond immediately. And we can do it because of your giving and you being able to help us. So we have to take care of other people. We have to take care of other people. And I love you guys. Well, I yell a lot, but remember, I'm like a preacher rapper, so just don't, don't worry about it. But I, I love you so much. Thank now, listen, um, stand up for me, Miss Rosemary. I love you so much, and I know you don't want me to do this, but it's so, it's so tough. Um, yeah, um, let me pray on the offering. I want you to come up here, right here, stood with me. So let's lift your hands. Father, bless our offering. Bless our seed right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I love you so much, and I thank you that this offering, whether they gave it online or gave it in person, is a seed to continue the work in our community. Father, we're not saying we're not involved in our community. We're just saying eternity is first. Yes. So we love you, and I ask you for a hundredfold blessing on everyone that sold a seed today. Father, their money is just a seed to bring them an additional harvest, whether they did it personally or online. I thank you, God, for the giving to your kingdom. And I ask that you would bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I got 30 mamas, right? No offense, mama. This is one of my other mamas. We've been going back so long. We went back a long way. So um, uh, it's a couple weeks now. It's been a couple weeks. Um, so a lot of you um, saw, he, he was my brother. He used to sit right over there, Miss Rosemary's son. But he is the founder of really, and I'm being honest now, Christian rap. There, there wasn't no Christian rap without no gospel gangsters. And they were amazing. His name was Charles Washington and his Miss Rosemary's son, uh, 49, Charles, 49? 49, and, and came out, his name was Solo, came out the house, fell on the, on the sidewalk, went straight to heaven, healthy, healthy. And so I love you so much. And our service is going to be here on June 27. Crystal, stand up. This is the oldest baby. I want you guys to be praying for Crystal. She wants to stand up, his sister. And when I say thousands and thousands and thousands of people are in heaven because of his voice, I mean, it wouldn't be no Lecrae without no solo. Wouldn't be no newsboys without no solo. No, listen to me. L they came out of the hood, and they proclaimed Jesus, and they transformed the rap industry. 
and now he's in heaven. And so I want you to be praying for the Washington family. We're going to celebrate him. I keep trying to pray for her, and she ends up praying for me on the phone. I, don't, I can't even ask mama no more, how you doing? She said, don't ask me that, pastor. I'm doing great. How you doing? I love you so much, mom. Stretch forth your hands, and we'll be done today. Father, I love you, and I thank you. And Father, I don't care about no social distancing, praying for my mama. Father, please bless her. Bless Crystal. Bless the other six kids, God. Bless the sisters, God. Father, we thank you. Solo's having his Sunday service with you. What a great honor. We will honor him, Father, as he spread the gospel more than almost anybody I've ever seen all over the world. And it was your choice to bring him to heaven, God. And even though we don't understand it, we honor you and him. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you, Mama. So listen. It's really important. We have to disinfect the sanctuary in the bathroom, so I'm going to ask you not to hang out and talk. I know it's the first time you've seen people, but we got to do this for like a month or two. You know, yeah, you already know how I feel. You already know how I feel about that. So please, I just need you to exit. There's doors here, doors there, and doors there, and I love you so much, and I enjoy seeing you. Sorry I yelled the whole time. God bless you.